Greetings, fellow gorehounds, and welcome back to a Blood Splatter vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Jacula. And he's Count Jacula. And today we're going to talk about an Argentinian fantasy horror film, Legion which is about a shaman who has to escape a psychiatric ward so that he can save his estranged daughter from a demon that is trying to steal her soul. That's pretty much yeah. the movie. That's, that's the plot. That's the whole plot. This movie's kind of separated into sections, right? Yeah. You have the asylum section, you have the post-escape section, and then you have the confrontation with the demon section, right? Yeah. The first section is very much one flew over the cuckoo's nest by way of Bubba Hotep. Yeah. Weird comedy with the weird characters inside the asylum. It's very humorous, not particularly scary, yeah. but it's very humorous. And you get these cool little flashbacks to him dealing with demons and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, fighting monsters and Because stuff. he used to be yeah. a shaman, but times change and now people think he's crazy, so he's in an asylum. And then you get to the middle section and it's a fish out of water meets a strange parent story about a guy just trying to connect with his daughter that wants nothing to do with him. Yeah. And you get to the third part of the movie, the third half. And it's all of a sudden Evil Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That turns into Evil Dead. And you're like, okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah. And when I say Evil Dead, I don't mean like scary Evil Dead, like the remake stuff. I mean funny Evil Dead, like Evil yeah, Dead Evil, Evil Dead, Dead 2. 2. Yeah, <laughs> Dead by Dawn. So this movie's a little all over the place, but somehow it all still works. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's one of those, a lot of other cultures have less problem. Uh, tone shifting? Tone shifting. Yeah, I agree. You know, like. You watch an Asian film, you watch a Mexican film. Yeah. Or, even, or an Argentinian film, as we are here, they, they are way more comfortable with rapid rapid, rapid tone shifts yeah, rapid you know? tone shifts sometimes even over weird things like in the host there's that funerals mm -hmm. i yeah. know i'm supposed to be laughing <laughs> yeah. because that's how this is shot it's clearly the intent but i feel kind of weird Doing yeah, The Host, which is a Korean giant monster movie that I highly recommend. Oh, yes. Yeah, Great good. example of that. The movie will shift from super dramatic to suddenly there's just goofy shit happening. Yeah. <laughs> and somehow it works, and it's a bit of a masterpiece. Yeah, you yeah, know? it's really good. I don't so, think this movie's a masterpiece, but I do think well, this movie's it's really not, good. It's not, not on the level of the host. No, like, but this is a really good movie. Yeah, it is. It's a solid B flick. It kind of reminds me of like movies like John Dies at the End. Yes, They're a little bit yeah. of everything. Yes. Yeah, America doesn't make these kind of movies. No, not like this. You know, where like, occasionally we do and it gets called a cult film. Yeah, but this is very much like, you know, I was, you know, I am a powerful brujo. Yeah. And then my daughter left because like she saw me have to fucking kill a dude who was possessed. <laughs> and she just couldn't handle that she anymore. She couldn't handle that no more. All of a sudden I have to murder somebody in a small apartment. And then all of a sudden, no, no, she ain't about that life no more. <laughs> I also love just how much of a grumpy asshole he is. Oh god. You have a little great. bit of that yeah. grumpy old men comedy kind of thing going on with, with with the beginning of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He starts out, he is already sick of your shit. Yeah. There's this really funny element, and this isn't a spoiler. We'll we'll tell you when we get to the spoilers, but there's this really funny element while he's at the asylum where he has written a play about his life, even though he's at this asylum and it's a play being put on by people in the asylum. Mm -hmm. He's still having to fight with the director over the facts of his life. Yeah. <laughs> because no one believes that any of it's real because he's in an asylum, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's obviously crazy, right? <laughs> he doesn't actually have magic powers. Uh, spoiler alert, he actually has magic powers. Oh, yeah. That's not even a spoiler. They show you that with the first flashback. Oh, right? yeah. Like, right away. The one thing I will say about this movie is that the horror element of the movie definitely leans more on the funny and the times where it tries to be scary doesn't quite hit the scary mark. No, no. It's, it's never it quite. works for the movie. Yeah. You're like, eh, I'm not really frightened by that, but I can't tell how much of that is just me being jaded as shit. Yeah, and most of that is the stuff in the flashbacks, right? When right. he's talking about confronting the demons as a young shaman. They feel like they're scenes out of, like, a supernatural A24 horror film. Yeah, yeah, or some uh, something like um, The Medium. The Medium, you yes, know, that's another one. Like, yeah. But, like, The Medium is legitimately terrifying. Yes. <laughs> If you were to compare it on a scary level, the medium is the way scarier. Movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is more like the this scares more... aren't for goof factor. No. It's not like Adam Sandberg made a fucking yeah. like Evil Dead flick or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it's not really that scary either. Because no. It's really more about the relationship between like this 
grumpy old mystic and his daughter. Yeah, absolutely. And some of that is portrayed as really funny, and some of that is portrayed as very dramatic, especially when we get to the flashbacks of her as a teenager. For most of his life, he lived in the goddamn woods. And yeah. then when he had a teenage girl, he moved into the big city and tried to adjust to life to that while still being a shaman who hunts demons. Yeah, and uh, like, he goes from a world that's very dangerous, mm -hmm. but he does have a lot of community respect. Yes. Like, people do are just like, great Brujo. Fucking man-eating demon. Yep. Eating our children. What do we do? Yep. He's like, I will cast a ritual. I will make an unction. And I will say, demon, get your motherfucking ass out of here. <laughs> And he comes to the city and there's still people asking him to do this stuff, but like nobody respects him. Oh yeah, there's no respect. And it's not surprising that he eventually ended up in an asylum. Yeah, because like just being in the, the, the environment to him is just soul killing. Yeah, man, I had a lot of fun with this movie. A movie of its type would most likely have tried to go the more action route, but this goes the family yeah. drama route yeah. instead. Yeah, you're right. Because like, now that I think about it, when I compare like the weird supernatural tone and how like things aren't quite scary, you know, they, they kind of work for the movie. I'm coming up with things like end of days. Oh yeah. Or like one of those where you're like, well, <laughs> I mean, this movie's way better than those, by the way, just to, just to let you know. Or, or, even, um, or even something which is not as action-oriented as those movies are, but even something like Bubba Hotep. Hotep, yeah. Which still has, like, their action sequences, but they're funny because they're action sequences with people who can't move very fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're action <laughs> sequences of dudes and walkers who yeah. got, like, creaky joints. This movie, like, it does reach a climax, and towards the climax, there is a lot of running, so to speak, but there's not yeah. a lot of, like, high-intensity action in this movie. Yeah. It's mainly comedy, malaise, family drama, occasionally some spooky shit. And then at the end, all of a sudden, evil dead demons. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> and somehow it all works. And yeah. I had a good time. You know, I kind of wish I could have seen it in theaters because it really does feel like a movie I want to eat popcorn while I'm oh, watching. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, I <laughs> I guess I could have popcorn at home. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, I like the characterization of the shaman because like, there are some times when he like, he misses, he, you know, he misses a couple of beats. Yeah. You know, because he's had a lot of practice and you know, he's a little older. But like, for the most part, there's definitely the feeling of <sighs> this shit again. Yeah. <laughs> The one thing I wish the movie had done, and this is a minor thing, there's a lot of, turns out I was right about all this shaman shit, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a minor complaint, but I kind of wished by the end of the movie, he had learned something as much as she had, as opposed to just her. Uh, yeah, yeah, as opposed <laughs> to just her, yeah. I, I, I could agree with that. This movie is currently available on Tubi if you want to watch it for free. If you do want to pay for it, and it is worth paying for, it is available to rent on various other platforms, but... I mean, it's on Tubi. You, you could just go to Tubi and watch it with a couple ads. And uh, with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, let us move on to the spoilers. Alrighty then. So there's really only like one major spoiler in this movie that I can think of. Yeah. And that's the fact that the demon that the main character has been dealing with, who has been following his daughter their entire life and he's been trying to get her away from, it turns out at the end of the movie, uh, he was secretly her husband the whole time. Yep. <laughs> that's the big twist. Yeah, that's a big twist. <laughs> I didn't bring this up in the pre-spoiler section, but I was a little confused by the ending of this movie, but I suppose it doesn't matter. Either way, it works. The ending of this movie ends with, you know, they confront the demon, they vanquish the demon, and then it like cuts back and forth between these shots of him and his daughter when they were younger, back in the woods, picking up from the point. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. After they, they, they finish up the plot proper, there's like this kind of like dream epilogue. And you're not sure yeah. if it's saying that it erased the demon from all time, so now they've never encountered the curse. So Because, okay, one of the through lines throughout this movie, they keep referring to it in the subtitled version as her faith. But what it seems to really be is her connection to magic. Yeah. Has been severed by the curse this demon put on her. Yeah. And in turn, it's also why she's less likely to believe the shit she's been. Yeah, cursed. yeah. It's well, it's also because, like, I give it this Brujo, which uh, is very connected to the idea of soul. And your soul is represented by an object. 
Mm. So you hold on to this object because it contains your soul. The necklace in the, the movie. The necklace in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. So it really would it should have been like, no, he's stolen your soul. Ah. Because got the necklace. Yeah. And okay. that's like where some of the confusion lies because you're like, no, it's not her faith, it's her her soul. The faith felt very weird in the translation and the way in the context of the movie it didn't seem like they were talking about faith. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because like that concept doesn't translate easily mm -hmm. into English without that kind of lengthy explanation. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. You know, at the end of the movie she gets the necklace back. Yeah. She gets her faith or her soul or her connection to magic is yeah. restored and then we have that dreamy sequence of it cutting to them when they were younger and cutting back to them on the rooftop where they defeated the demon i read it like one of three different ways one is they're back together and it's like when they were kids and it's a little bit more metaphorical like like yeah. their connections restored the other one is a little bit more literal now that they defeated the demon it's reverted back to time to the point where the demon cursed her and now they're back to normal and they're yeah. gonna live out their life having never dealt with that and the other one is they not only vanquish the demon they erase the demon from time so now they're back on the rooftop but it's like none of that happened yeah yeah, yeah. each of which kind of metaphorically and storytelling wise amount to the same yeah thing. yeah but they there's all... a confusion as to how literal that is yeah it's one of those things um, where it doesn't really ruin the movie i'm okay with it being a little ambiguous because to be honest any of the possible conclusions in this movie i was okay with like, yeah exactly any of those track you know and that's that's why it's a solid flick. Now, for the people that subscribe to this channel, I think the thing that's really going to sell you on this movie, though, is the last 20 minutes. His therapist at the asylum drinks this. It was like a jar that had like a butterfly. And every time he perform a ritual, it would turn into a butterfly. And when he's not performing a ritual, it turns into a little larva. And when there is a demon near, the yeah. larva twitches, you know. And she drinks it because at a point in this movie, he gets taken back to the asylum when he tries to connect with his daughter and he has to re-escape again. Yeah, yeah. And the way he escapes is actually she drinks it and gets possessed by a demon and then goes on like an evil dead murder rampage in yeah. the asylum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like she drinks it quite correctly assuming that it's tequila. Yeah, yeah. You know, like he's like, oh, tequila. Da -da 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 -da, you know, but not realizing that it's a special worm. Yeah. Like that, that warns against demon and apparently has demon in it yes because she immediately gets fucking possessed yeah yeah it starts know. going full evil dead and it's weird because it's the only time the demons are presented that way in the movie yeah throughout the rest of the movie it's more like a supernatural exorcist style movie yeah you either don't see them or they're like a shadowy figure in the her, woods or yeah. something but her fucking possession <laughs> is straight up, starts twitching, turns into a dead eye. Yeah, this movie delivers on some horror shit by yeah. the end of it, 100%. <laughs> It is a fun flick. It is very fun. I had a good time. Yeah. So anyway, my friends, Legions, like I said, it's available on Tubi. You can rent it on other platforms, but if you have access to Tubi, might as well watch it there. It's free. Where can they find you, Count Jackula? Oh, you can find me on YouTube where I stream. I got my own channel. You can look for me, Count Jackula. You see this face in... Right now, it, it still got me in the, the satanic Jackula makeup. So uh, there's that. What about you? Y'all know me. I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me at the Horror Guru on Twitter, on Twitch, on Instagram, and various other platforms. Just look up The Horror Guru or Blood Splattered Cinema, and I'll be there. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And if you'd like to help out either of us more directly, be sure to check out our Patreon pages, and remember, even a dollar a month can go a long way. If you made it this far into the video, then I want you to comment below, and be sure to comment below using the hashtag hashtag don't drink the worm. That way Jack knows. That way the whole world knows you watch this video all the way through.